Great. Well, then I, I do have some questions about kind of f future features and capabilities. You know, one of the things that's getting a lot of interest right now is this new um, bi-directional EV charging. Now, I know that the EV there's not a lot of information out there readily available to consumers about what to look for in a battery. Never in our lifetime have we bought energy in a free market. So we have the opportunity to change that now, and it all begins with transparency. Lynn Tran is the VP of Product Marketing for Franklin Whole Home Battery. And as you know, if you've been following the channel for a while, the Franklin Whole Home Battery System is one of the most exciting products that we've been covering over the past year. And Lynn has agreed to spend some time and really sit down with us and, and tell us a little bit more of her story, not just what you're doing now at Franklin, but how you got into the solar and battery storage industry and, and where you'd like to go from here. So Lynn, thank you so much for joining us and welcome, welcome to the podcast. Great, thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me. Uh, I started in the energy space by using thermal storage actually to uh, mitigate energy usage on the electrical grid and uh, ultimately prevent rolling blackouts. So as technology has improved, instead of using thermal storage to mitigate the energy on the grid, it's simply just using lithium storage. And lithium storage is a very niche industry, even though we use uh, lithium batteries for, for decades. The reason being is because there's so few tier one cell manufacturers in the world. And uh, shortly after introducing Tesla to some of their first commercial uh, customers in California, I started looking around lithium storage and researching and then Big Brother reached out and all of a sudden I had a position with LG Chem. I just want whatever I know to be shared with homeowners because I know I was in a very unique position and not many people have the opportunity to work for a cell manufacturer and see the industry grow to where it is now. So I have a very good vantage point and, and want to share. Absolutely. Well, you know, here on Solar Search, we're, we're big on education. You know, that's, that's one of our core philosophies is that if you can provide as much value up front through education, then when a potential system owner is ready to go shopping, they're ready to actually buy something, you know, chances are they're going to buy from you because you, you've been the one to kind of explain things to them and help them through this decision making process. Um, but it's really exciting for me to talk to somebody who's been in, in the solar and storage space for as long or maybe even longer than I have. Now, I know when I started with solar and battery storage, we were using like golf cart batteries. Literally, we were using golf cart batteries, forklift batteries. They were big, ugly. Um, you, you could spill sulfuric acid on yourself if you weren't careful. <laughs> but it was what was available. Right, mm -hmm. right. And, and that's how I started. I was doing purely off-grid systems when I started in solar. And it wasn't until around 2014, 2015 that we actually started even offering grid-tied systems. Uh, when I was installing. Um, so what, what were you doing around that time? I know you said you, so you worked for a cell manufacturer and then you ultimately started with LG Chem. What was it like on that side at, at that time when, when solar and storage was kind of just getting, just becoming, just becoming a, a category? It was the Wild West. There, I, I, how I would summarize the industry from about 2014 to today has been an exceptional learning curve and uh, very, very high growth of innovation in the industry. So <clears throat> for example, when I first started at LG Chem, I supported utility scale projects, commercial projects, and residential batteries. Just a word from our sponsor, Span.io and the Span Smart Electrical Panel. If you're considering an investment in a solar plus battery backup system for your home, then you're going to want to have maximum visibility and control of how much solar energy you're collecting, how much energy you're storing, and where that energy is being spent within your home. The SPAN Smart Electrical Panel allows you to dynamically control which circuits have access to backup power and which ones do not without the need of a separate critical loads panel and get up to 40% more running time on your battery backup. So feel free to go directly to the span.io website, or you can just visit the link on the description below. It'll take you to the page. You can get more information, or if you'd like to, get in touch with an installer right away. 
So around that time when you started getting involved in the, the messy batteries that were available, the lithium ion industry um, had been advancing significantly because of electric vehicles. And like Tesla, for example, they're in a vehicle manufacturer. And they also have a Powerwall product because they're very similar, uh, very large format lithium battery products. So in the industry, to have an energy storage system, you need to have lithium batteries, power conditioning, and controls. You need those three components. Every three, those three components are fundamental for any uh, energy storage system that you would ever be interested in. The concept of our industry and a lot from how the industry started was a lot of partnering. The hardware people were trying to partner together. The, the batteries were trying to integrate with the inverters. And then the software was trying to integrate, integrate and lay on top of the hardware set. And in the early part of the industry, everybody was trying to build their own battery. It was build or buy, build or buy. That was the B2B world of I want to buy a battery. I want to talk to LG and will you supply me batteries? The answer nine times out of 10 was no, or 99 times out of 100 was no. And the reason is because tier one cell suppliers are supplying the automotive industry and they work on five year supply contracts and little residential home batteries is the value add to a consumer is still being proven. And it's very hard in my personal opinion and a little bit of insight from the B2B space, um, consumers have as much to benefit from co-located home batteries as the utility does. But right now the utility is, the utilities don't generally are forthcoming with this information that these type of grid service programs, the programs that help keep blackouts at bay and keep blackouts, the, the rotating outages from happening, they're not informing customers, hey, if you're considering solar, you should know that your power production can be used on the grid and I'm willing to pay you for that. And that needs to be shared with consumers so that you know that when you're procuring your solar system and someone's putting your, your solar deal together, that they are, that you're not cutting yourself out of an opportunity to earn money on your battery. And that's, you know, my, my whole thing and why I got into this in the first place was I, I, I want people to have more choice, more control over their energy situation and, and, and thereby to become more self-sufficient. So, but anyway, there's a lot going on in our industry now. As you know, a lot of new battery companies. And every time I go to these shows, I'm, I'm always amazed at there's a new branded battery out there from a manufacturer that I've heard of the brand, but I've never knew that they had anything to do with battery storage, but now they have their battery and they're part of the conversation. Um, why do you think there are so many companies or why do you think that seems that all of the top solar brands, whether they were into batteries or not, now want to be part of this battery experience, this battery conversation? There's so much value to energy storage, so much value. <clears throat> and homeowner uh, solar and storage is more valuable than the utility owning a big 300 megawatt hour battery plant. It's in, con there's no one in this industry that's going to convey that to a consumer, but that's the magnitude of the change that can happen with residential rooftop solar and storage deployments. Everybody wants a battery. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants a battery because there's so much value add uh, to, to get from owning, operating, somehow being involved with the battery. Batteries are everywhere. Think about it. Uh, we don't buy anything based on the battery. Never have we picked a cell phone or a laptop based specifically on um, the battery type or the battery chemistry or cell historically. Uh, and now we are basing how we become gridless and power our entire home, our safety, our security based on the battery. So it's a complete flip the script in our consumer history of, of how we go around and use energy storage. But I refer back to, again, not my data, Rocky Mountain Institute, uh, 13 value add of energy storage. And you'll see there's just as much value add for a consumer to get out of an energy storage system as the utility. When you put rooftop solar and storage on your house, you become your own utility. 
and you're flipping the script. Now you now the utility wants the power that you can generate from your address because they're they're having troubles on their grid. And that choice of who you talk to to learn about solar, who do you go to to buy your solar, who installs your solar, who finances your solar, all of that equation is your choice. And that's not something we're accustomed to because never in our lifetime have we bought energy in a free market. So we have the opportunity to change that now and it all begins with transparency. Yeah. It all begins with you. Yeah, and, and, and education. And I'm glad that you, you explained it that way because that's exactly right. For for decades, ever since the electric grid was introduced, it was, at least as far as I can remember, it's always been this monopolistic structure. This is your power company. This is how much you pay or we turn the lights off. And people are kind of like beaten down into that kind of uh, position where they're, they're kind of kind of needy and weak. I hate to say it like that, but that, that's what it is. is you're, you're just kind of like, take it or leave it. This is what, what you get. What else are you going to do? Because what else are you going to do? And, and what we're saying now is no, now you actually have energy choice. It's a little bit complicated. You have to understand concepts like harvesting energy, storing energy, inverting, transforming. Yes, I understand that there's, there's some things to learn here, but if you take the, the time and learn it, and then if you choose to take the step to actually acquire one of these systems, you can own the means of providing your own energy. In other words, you can be self-sufficient or energy independent, as we say, you say, you know, gridless. But the idea is you can actually take control of that part of your life as opposed to just taking whatever they give you, right? And that, that's mentally, I think there's like a mental shift that needs to happen that say, hey, wait a second, I can do this for myself. There's more responsibility with that freedom, but there's more freedom at the end of the day. Well, then I, I do have some questions about kind of f future features and capabilities. You know, one of the things that's getting a lot of interest right now is this new um, bi-directional EV charging. Now, I know that the EV charger hookup or the there, there's a part of the Franklin A-gate that has sort of a dedicated EV charger connection. What do things look like in the future for your product and how, how does bi-directional EV charging fit into the product roadmap? <coughs> Excuse me. Absolutely. Uh, vehicle to H or to house V to H um, is is definitely a concept in, in, in into the grid service con grid services conversation we had earlier. Uh, discharging your car battery to power your home or power the grid versus uh, just leaving it in the tank. So the. What's going to come on the roadmap for the Franklin battery is, yes, bidirectional EV charging. Please stay, stu uh, stay tuned for that. What's currently available is the ability to have what we call smart circuits. So if you do have an electric vehicle and you have a Franklin whole home power system, you can uh, put smart circuit module on and put your heavy loads like your EV charger on dedicated circuits so that if you're in an outage and you're not aware of it, your when your battery reserves come to a certain level, it'll automatically kick off. It'll stop charging your EV vehicle so it can focus on your battery reserves during the outage. So there's features for EV charging both now and, and in the future, but we'll have to stay tuned a little bit on the future developments. Well, then I know we're kind of running out of time for today's podcast, but is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, I, I would. I would like to say that there are resources like Joe out there providing the information, providing the transparency that is necessary to make smart decisions on how you get your piece of solar power and the Sunshine's free right now, as far as I, as far as I know, and the sun's pretty reliable. So if you can able, if you're enable, if you're able to have solar rooftop solar, um, or are considering it, please talk to Joe so you can get the the best information, be well informed, so that you have the best uh, emergency power for for your home. Well, and thank you so much for the endorsement and for taking some time to sit down with us. Uh, again, folks, Lynn Tran, Vice President of Product Marketing at Franklin Whole Home Battery. Lynn, thank you so much for spending some time with us, and we wish you very much success with uh, the business this year. Great. Thank you, Joe. Hey, if you enjoyed this interview and you want to watch the full-length version, be sure to visit the new Solar Surge podcast channel, where we're going to be talking to most of the top brands and top companies within the solar space to make sure that you have the most up-to-date industry information. Well, folks, that does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.